100 automation first tables, right? So you can create 100 tables, 200 fields per table, which is obscenely large, and 100,000 records per table, as well as views and AI powered fields. So if I trigger a zap button clicked in Zapier tables, then it sends an outbound email by Zapier and then updates the record in the table. Hey there, my name is Dimitri. And in this video, I'm going to dive into some of the different ways that you can utilize Zapier tables to improve your automations. To me, this is actually a new product that I was unaware of. And as somebody who has been working in the automation space for a while, I very much enjoy checking out these tools and I'm interested to see how they can help your workflow, my workflow, everybody's workflow in order to make tables that are really built for automation, streamline your data and make for easier collaboration. Imagine tables as sort of a database that al allows you to store some of the stuff that we deal with in automations without needing to have a third party option like Notion or something like that inside of an automation. And a lot of the ways that this is gonna be useful are for things like you know contact lists and whatnot, or even reference tables to match data inside of a workflow. And another great template example here would be Web Clipper. I mean, think about how often times it would just be easier to have that sent to a specific table. So for me, I would say that I'm actually going to utilize the lead tracker template, which by the way, you can get all these different templates inside of Zapier. All you need to go is to go to this table space and uh, then I press start here and it creates a table for me. As you can see here inside of this, I actually have a record limit um, of 2,500. Now the reason for that is, is that I just have the basic version of this, which you do get with all of these different uh, levels. As you can see here, it says tables basic uh, for everybody. But if you wanna add a add-on of $20 per month, what you'll get with tables premium is 100 automation first tables, right? So you can create 100 tables, 200 fields per table, which is obscenely large. <laughs> and 100,000 records per table, as well as views and AI powered fields. So it is going to be pretty powerful once they end up rolling this out and making it a little bit better. Um, but for this kind of template, you'll notice here that they've already connected with some zaps and it created a zap with the template. So if I were to go here and press edit, it's gonna take me to the other tab to showcase exactly how this works. So if I trigger a zap button clicked in Zapier tables, then it sends an outbound email by Zapier and then updates the record in the table. So this is essentially four leads, right? So all of these different items, if you click on this, it showcases what different automations are connected. It seems like it's just the one. And literally it will just reference the data within here to send a message. So if my email, for example, is mcc at riseproductive.com that I'm trying to send this to, this is a test. And then the body of it would be Something along the lines of, I love that this is an automation. Yeah. <laughs> and this is for me, Dimitri Panici. I have the ability to then press send email and it triggers the table, right? And then sends it out. So after I take a second, you'll see that I get this no reply email from Zapier that says, I love this automation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then uh, it even comes with a, please stop sending me messages unsubscribe from the table sort of request, right? So this would prevent people from being able to be sent these out similar to other uh, subscribe or unsubscribe buttons with this kind of stuff. And you can see here after I press send email, the email sent field ends up updating. And this is reflected inside of all of these steps. This ended up grabbing the record ID that the button was pressed from changing the email sent to true, all that kind of stuff. So all these different templates as well, and the ones that you make can be shared with other people. So the nice thing about creating public shared links like this is that you can build out systems for people without needing for it to be tool related. So it could be not Notion, not SmartSuite, not ClickUp, but with these tables instead. And inside of tables, in order to add a new field, all you need to do is add a record right here. And you'll notice that after I make the new record, it actually has this new ID attached to it. So every single record has its own individual ID, similar to like a page ID inside of Notion or other products like that. Any record following that can be selected like this. They can be selected all at once. And once they're selected, you then have the ability to right click and press delete, duplicate, copy record to clipboard, choose which zaps to run. So you could grab multiple of them and run all of the zaps at once, which is really cool. And this product also has amazing view and filter functionality. So if I create a new view, all right, so I can just call it just me. 
which for some reason could be a thing. This view, right, would be under the default view. And then on it, once I'm inside it, you can hide specific fields or add filters. So I could add a filter that the name is exactly Dimitri Panici. They might be saying it's pretty basic functionality. Yeah, it is. But if you end up wanting to have this coinciding with your system without needing to have a different product, uh, might be worth it for sure. Any of these different tables can in fact expand fields. So uh, let's do a stage field. And this could be of a myriad of different ones. So they're actually adding a couple ones that I think are going to be crazy. Uh, one being JSON. So this would make automations very powerful if this was something that was in there. Buttons are awesome. That's not even in a lot of apps like Notion databases at the moment. Phone numbers, links, checkboxes, drop downs. AI fields going to be interesting. You have to get the premium tables to check this out. But just for something like drop down, I can select multiple items and I can do things like lead, qualified, proposed, closed, and lost. Okay. I could also have allowed multiple selections to make it a multi-select. I'm actually going to take this and drag it over here to the left. Let's say this was like a sales process. And I were to adjust this to say I am qualified. I also could have a status, which would be active or inactive. So let's grab this guy, make a drop down. So for me, this usually just means that I am able to make a view that would easily archive people who are like at certain parts of the pipeline, but not necessarily at where they need to be so I can like archive them. So I just moved some things to the left as you'll notice. Um, there's this interesting situation now where I can drag to adjust the frozen field. So say I want to see multiple of these at once, and then I could go left to right on the view. Um, I'm actually just going to move this all the way to the left because I don't really need the frozen field right here, but you can see it's a little bit more bolded in this spot. And that's how you can drag the frozen fields. So for me, I'm going to set this as active and I'm actually going to change the filter to status is exactly active so that there are no archived options there. Then if I want to switch to the other view, I can go back to the default view and both of these would be shown. You'll notice that the order of these are a little bit different. Um, the frozen field is different. This is stuck here. When I press the hide fields, I have the ability to untick any of these. It's pretty cool how this essentially is the same functionality of something like Notion, of something like Smart Suite and ClickUp, but I don't have to go anywhere for it. And uh, it's just going to interconnect with a lot of these different things as well, right? Like I, I know that this is going to connect great to my zaps with minimal effort. And the way that these zaps were connected to these fields is actually pretty cool too. You have the ability to press view connected apps, then press create zap if I want to and create an entire zap from it. Or inside of here, you'll notice that if I want to, I could adjust something like the status to change the stage to proposed. And then whether I need to send it or not, after publishing this, you'll notice that the stage now has this little zap here because I made a change to it in one of the steps inside of an automation. So, Honestly, these tables are pretty robust and I have to make a lot of videos in order to cover all the functionality, but basically the same kind of stuff that you're going to get out of the majority of database products out there with some advantages and some disadvantages. I'm curious what your guys' thoughts are on this and if you have anything that would make me think of new ideas to make videos about in order to augment your system and help you, you know, put this into your automations, please let me know. I'm interested in creating more content about this. I just wanted to give you a brief overview of all the things that tables can do and let you know that they are in fact available and a little under talked about in the no code world because I don't, I don't know how long they've been out for. I guess earlier this year, I saw some videos in May. So probably earlier this year. Yeah, I just found out about them recently and I'm very excited to make more content about them. If you like this video and want to see more on how to improve your productivity systems like this one even more, make sure to check out videos like this one right here.